Heavy Metal is dead and will most likely not survive the next decade. What? A phrase which you could hear quite a lot by the late 70s of the previous century. Yeah, unbelievable. But of course, metal did not only survive the 1980s, but also has grown much more than anyone expected. And this was of course at least partially thanks to the new wave of British heavy metal. Yep. <laughs> so, as we agreed before, let's first of all take a look at the origins of the movement, discuss why it emerged in the first place, and then hopefully finally answer the question which was the very first band to start the new wave of British heavy metal. Here you go. Very quick, before we start guys, as always, please do not hesitate to comment on anything you hear or see in this video, and especially if you disagree with me, because the whole point of our Metal Pilgrim community is of course to start a conversation. But alright, let's do it! By the late 70s, metal was pretty much hanging over the cliff, with many bands even going as far as trying to distance themselves from the entire term heavy metal as far as they possibly could. It's just outrageous. And the reasons for that were pretty simple. First of all, many of the bands which were considered metal back then, including the genre's founders, were somewhat struggling creatively. And secondly, and most importantly, most of the media's attention and most of the airwaves back then were absolutely dominated by the rebellious punk rock movement and disco at the same time, with heavy metal being considered an outdated fling, which will most likely pass and completely fade away in just a couple of years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One thing that was not taken into account by many was the fact that due to the enormous success such bands as Black Sabbath, Judas Priest and Thin Lizzy had, the entire new generation of musicians who played the loud headbanging music grew up within the underground scene of the United Kingdom from 1975 onwards. And those ruthless boys and girls had a steady and a very dedicated following of metal fans who were not really ready to blend in with the crowd, but grew in numbers while largely being ignored by the outsiders to the world of heavy metal. So given the fact that all the media attention, despite of the fact that the market was clearly there, but was given pretty much exclusively to rebellious punk rockers, the growth and popularization of this entire underground movement depended pretty much solely on the enthusiasm of several people, one of whom of course was the bandwagon club DJ Neil K. <laughs> In 1975, Neil Kay took over the role of a DJ at the backroom of the Prince of Wales pub, known as the Bandwagon. And slowly but steadily, Neil started to incorporate a couple of rock songs a night amidst the mostly disco setlist. Soon enough, he took the Sunday night residency at the club, which became the most popular night of the week, with the crowd pouring in from all over London, drawn to the sounds of Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin and Judas Priest blasting from possibly the biggest club sound systems in town. In fact, it was one of the only clubs in the city which would play rock and metal on a regular basis, turning Neil's nights into the heavy metal sound house, which later on also became a stage for the very first performances of many legendary heavy metal bands, among the first of which were Samson, Angel Witch, Brain Mantis, Nuts and the Mighty Saxon. <laughs> Neil also played his role in popularizing this tiny little band most of the channel's viewers most likely have never heard of, and it is his club after which Iron Maiden of course named their debut EP, and the story of which of course deserves a separate episode of its own. Gonna get on down! Welcome your very own Iron Maiden! Come on! Thank you! Well, it's nice to be back here again. And of course, another guy who happened to be Neil's friend, who had this tiny little influence on the whole development of new wave of British heavy metal, was Jeff Barton. Pretty much everyone nowadays knows that the whole term of new wave of British heavy metal was coined by the journalist Jeff Barton for the Sounds magazine article released in May of 1979. In reality, this was not actually the first article Jeff wrote on the movement and was a result of much bigger processes going on around the heavy metal scene in the United Kingdom. The very 
first time Jeff wrote about the heavy metal sound house was all the way back on August 19th in 1978, so almost a year before the article in which he first came up with the term new wave for British heavy metal was published in the same magazine. Yet the first time round he simply wrote about a very unusual disco club in which, believe it or not, a DJ would play heavy metal instead of dance music. It cannot be. And by the way, I'll make sure to post all of those images of the magazines and more on my Patreon page, which, you know, I never promote, but just to let you know, it does exist, and I'm very thankful to everyone who supports me there. His family. But anyway, since then, Jeff would occasionally write an article or review about the underground heavy metal scene, until on May 8th in 1979, he writes a review of a gig featuring the bands Angel Witch, Iron Maiden, and Samson, in which he uses the term New Wave of British Heavy Metal to reference those bands. <laughs> And so the whole idea of the term new wave of British heavy metal was of course to distinguish it from the, well, original wave of British heavy metal. <laughs> and here I believe that we have to set the record straight once and for all. No, Black Sabbath and Judas Priest were not the new wave of British heavy metal bands. And although they had an enormous influence on new wave of British heavy metal, and we will talk about this in just a little bit, but in reality they were the bands which Jeff Warden wanted to distinguish the underground scene from. And by the way, the same goes for Motorhead. For even though the major rise in popularity for them of course happened around the same time it did for many new wave of British heavy metal bands, they did not only start significantly earlier than those bands, but also were rather different from them both ideologically and stylistically. Oh, and we of course all know the exact genre which Motorhead played in, right? Don't forget us. Our name is Motorhead. We play rock and roll. Yet while this term became widely used by the metal community, many musicians, including the boys from Iron Maiden, for example, absolutely hated it, stating that there was no particular musical difference between them and the bands which came 10 years earlier, although agreeing that it did represent a lot of bands which otherwise were utterly ignored by the mainstream media. Music! We need music! This is music! And while I agree that stylistically there is actually no common unifier for NWBHM bands, as let's be honest here, musically Diamond Head, Iron Maiden and Venom are all very different. Yes, that's true. I like this term to represent a social movement more so than just a subgenre of music during which some of the greatest heavy metal bands in history were formed. <laughs> Anyways, whether you like it or not, it was this article that helped many to unify the underground scene and shine more light on the new bands and the genre. Although, of course, there were many other people, radio stations and media, which were part of this process. And even more, if we're being very honest, this term was actually coined by the editor, Alan Lewis, and Jeff did not really come up with it himself, but still, I guess it is May 9th that we can all celebrate as the birthday of new wave of British heavy metal. By 1980, there were dozens if not hundreds of heavy metal bands around the United Kingdom which could easily be characterized as new wave of British heavy metal. And despite the fact that, let's be honest here, for most of those bands the production was not really at the level we all are used to today, there are a lot of hidden gems which were released during that period. But I actually do not intend to go into them in this particular episode, as it is dedicated only to how and why did the new wave of British heavy metal emerge in the first place. Why, why, why? Yet in one of the future episodes, I'll be more than happy to discuss the high days of new wave of British heavy metal, and also why did this movement decline by the 1980s, and how it has not affected at all one of the biggest heavy metal bands on the planet. So if you think that several episodes on the matter would be of interest for you, please do let us know in the comments. Oh, and also friends, I just wanted to point out that only around 30% of the people who are watching my videos are actually subscribed to the Metal Pilgrim channel. So if you still haven't done so yet, and especially if you did watch more than one episode on this show, I'll be super thankful if you consider doing it right now. But anyways, there were still some bands which were there from the very beginning and did leave a much bigger footprint on the development of the genre than 
anybody else. Among the early representatives of the movement are of course such bands as Iron Maiden, Saxon and Daft Leppard with their first two albums, who right away showed that they do not intend to stay underground and of course gained worldwide success in the early 80s. <laughs> Samson's debut album Survivors from 1979, released through Laser Records, put them on the forefront of the movement right away, and Tigers of Pantang's debut Don't Touch Me There, released through Neat Records, which by the way played a fundamental role in giving new bands a shot back then, showed how diverse NWABHM can be. <laughs> Overall, by 1979, dozens of bands released their first demos or EPs, including Witchfinder, Angel Witch, Girl School, Sledgehammer, Myth, and many others. And although many of them never made it outside of their own heavy metal bubble, they all contributed to the growth of the movement. And of course, among those who were also on the forefront of the genre and without whom it would never have gained the reputation it did were Diamond Head, which by the way, I believe is one of the greatest heavy metal bands on the planet. Yeah, me too. Brain Mantis, Demon, Trespass, Blitzkrieg, Raven, Grim Reaper, and Venom. Although the later ones only started in 1979, which raises a question whether we can consider them and WOBHM or not and which I'd love to discuss in the future. And of course there are many, many other bands which should be included in this list, yet in my humble opinion with which you are of course very, very welcome to disagree. These are the bands without which we would never be able to tie this new generation of heavy metal musicians in the United Kingdom into a one definitive subgenre of heavy metal, somewhat tied together both ideologically and musically. So who and why started the new wave of British heavy metal? Well, I guess the long-winded answer would be the social unrest as a result of economic recession due to the ineffective domestic policies by the governments preceding that of Margaret Thatcher's, but this is not really the answer we're looking for, isn't it? No. The reason why heavy metal so declined by the late 70s was that its early incarnation, forged in the depth of Midlands by its founders, was not really willing to adapt to the new realities and embrace the change in sound which many demanded, and thus, with its dark and gloomy atmosphere, simply was not relatable to many. Bro, what are you talking about, man? And this was exactly why punk rockers, who played much simpler music, yet simply looked way more exciting, were given pretty much all of the attention by both music and mainstream media of that time. And although today, 45 years later, we can all of course say that new wave of British heavy metal bands did, in fact, embrace the original heavy metal sound of the early 70s and the punk rock catchiness, this wasn't really the case for most of those bands all the way until until 1978, and which of course is very, very evident with the example of the legendary Iron Maiden, which if you haven't yet, you can check out in one of the Evolution episodes we did on the channel before. <laughs> and thus I believe we should actually thank for the kickoff of New Wave of British Heavy Metal, a band which has actually nothing to do with this movement. In the beginning of 1978, representatives of the first wave of British heavy metal released the album Steam Class, on which they finally embraced the aggressiveness and catchiness of punk rock's music. <laughs> that same year they completely steal punk rock's thunder by giving their new and electric sound a very recognizable look on their second album that same year, Killing Machine, or of course Hellbent for Leather, depending on how you know it. And although their music and all of those bands of course did exist before that and would most likely be noticed by labels at some point, those two albums gave not only Judas Priest but also everyone in the underground heavy metal scene a massive push. Thus, although not being part of the movement, they were actually able to formalize and what most importantly is sell the sound of the underground scene which was boiling up in the clubs of the United Kingdom. And the financial success which both of those albums had in the United Kingdom and in the United States 
of course followed by the legendary Unleashed in the East, released later next year, show the industry that there is actually an enormous commercial potential in some of those bands which were playing right there under their nose, which later on helped such bands as Def Leppard, Saxon and Iron Maiden release the first full-scale albums by the actual new wave of British heavy metal bands. Yeah! Anyways, which are your personal favorite new wave of British heavy metal bands? And which ones, in addition to our beloved Iron Maiden, of course, would you like me to cover more on the show? Please let us know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching this short video, guys. But more than anything, thank you so much for supporting me, this show, and Ukraine through this very, very difficult time. Please remember that the biggest war since World War II is still going on right now in the middle of Europe, and there are people dying here every day. We will prevail. Slava Ukraini!